guys, welcome back to or welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Chayan Alton. And if you have, thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. You have no idea how much it means to me. And yeah, so today's video is the second episode in my True Crimes of Australia series. Well, it's episode two, part two on this particular case. And if you saw the last video I did in True Crimes of Australia, you will know that we are covering Ivan Malat. And with this series clearly called True Crimes of Australia, so I'm aiming more for Australian true crime content. Because you don't hear a lot about it and you don't hear about a lot of Australian stuff. You hear more about America and... England and all that but never really here unless you um, live here and you've heard about it and I kind of just want to share these more and educate people and yeah since 1989 there have been a lot of backpackers that have reportedly gone missing either around the Belangelo State Forest area or in the Belangelo State Forest and this was before Malat's first known victims were found in 1992. For those of you who don't live in Australia or just don't know where the Belangelo State Forest is, it's an hour to an hour and a half away from Sydney and it is located south of Barima in the Southern Highlands, which is 3 kilometres west of the Shume Highway between Canberra and Sydney. And, not gonna lie, the Belangelo State Forest is fucking massive. It is estimated to be around 3,800 hectares. In 1990, on the Australia Day long weekend, Paul Thomas Onion only just managed to escape Ivan Malab. Paul Onion was an ex-Navy member from Birmingham, England, and he actually joined the Navy when he was a teenager. When he was 24 years old and working as an air conditioning mechanic, he grew tired of it, and he thought his longing for travel was over after doing his time in the Navy, but it wasn't, so he decided that he wanted to travel again, and he chose to backpack around Australia. So he left his job in Birmingham, flew to Sydney and stayed in a youth hostel with some friends. He then caught a train to the outskirts of Sydney and he was looking to catch a ride down the Shume Highway and was headed to Mildura. When he was at a shop near a small town in the New South Wales Southern Highlands called Mittagon, he was offered a ride by a really friendly guy with a handlebar moustache. This trip was him getting to travel Australia, he was a lover of adventure, he's still alive, I don't know if he was, and this was to be his Australian adventure, and it was an adventure that he nearly didn't survive. Ivan Malat had introduced himself to Onions as Bill, which is actually one of Malat's brother's names. And he offered Onions a ride while he was hitchhiking down the Hume Highway. After a while of being in the vehicle with Bill, Onions started to grow more suspicious as the man, Malat, started to make offhand, inappropriate, offensive, racist comments and remarks. And the man's actions and words were making Onions go more and more worried as the ride continued. Ivan Malat pulled over once, claiming that the radio was starting to or was about to play up and he was getting cassettes from under the driver's seat. And Onion decided to step out of the vehicle for a moment and stretch his legs and Bill would ask him why he got out of the vehicle. Poor Onion didn't see the big deal and just got back in the vehicle not realising that he was meant to be Ivan Malat's next victim. When he got back in the vehicle, he was still suspicious of Malat, but he was really grateful to be able to catch a ride. 
when they both got back into the vehicle and were starting to get ready to start driving again, Malat then got out of his vehicle again saying that he was again looking for the cassette and in a in an interview with 60 Minutes, Paul Onion stated that this seemed very weird to him and made him more suspicious because there was actually some cassettes in the console between them but when Malat stood back up from reaching under the driver's seat he had a revolver in his hand. He of course pointed the revolver at Onions and then Onions noticed the rope that had been in the car. He then got out of the vehicle and ran for his life across the busy Hume Highway and away from Malat. In this same 60 minute interview he claimed that Bill shouted twice, stop or else I'll shoot. Malat then fired the revolver and Onion was desperately trying to flag down a car and get to safety and he nearly gave up and Bill was shouting in the background trying to get him back into the car so he could kill him like he did with the other victim but then Onion made a very very brave and smart decision. He decided to make the next car to come by stop no matter what and lucky for him that plan worked. A woman by the name of Mrs. Joanne Berry stopped her vehicle and helped and rescued Paul Onion. She was driving the vehicle with her sister and their five children and they were making a journey down to Canberra at the time. He dived into the car and they made the journey to the nearest police station. And Joanne claimed in the 60 Minutes interview that Paul Onion jumped in a vehicle and was just shouting, help me, he got a gun. And she also stated that he was a very lucky man to have gotten away from a lot and to have not joined the others in the Belangelo State Forest. Paul Onion looked out of the vehicle one last time at Ivan Malat while the vehicle was retreating as quickly as possible and stated that Ivan Malat seemed to be smirking. Paul Onion and Joanne Berry did go to the Barrel Police Station and they told the policewoman on duty what had taken place and Joanne Berry, who is such an amazing, such a lovely, kind person, you can See the kind of person she is in this 60 minute interview, which I will have linked down below. Um, she just seems like that's a kind spirit and not a lot of people would have stopped for Paul. But she actually decided to go into the police station with him because of how distressed he was. I mean, who wouldn't be? He had a gun fired at him, pointed at him. And so she went in with him, but in their panic, no one got a license plate number. They recounted everything that happened to the police. They recounted like the events that unfolded, what the attacker looked like and where the attack had taken place. But unfortunately at that time the location had nothing significant to the police as there were no bodies or victims found at that stage. No one ever suspected that a serial killer was working away at backpackers. There were some theories and ideas emerging but that wasn't until closer to the victim being found and sadly that information never left the Barrel police station. It actually stayed there for a really long time and Paul Onion was and is still known as the one who got away and probably will always be known as that. Anyways, that is all for today's video. I know it is shorter, but I've broken it up into early life, the one who got away, and then I've split up some of the victims. So what I'm doing is two victims that were found together, two that were found together, and then the other ones that were found separately together, and then I'm tying it all at the end. And I thought this would be a good episode by itself with the fact that they could have caught him way sooner than they did. If one of those cases, a lot of serial killer cases are like this where they could have caught the killer way sooner than they did. 
but dad did good play Dyson never let the information out they didn't take it too seriously that was not the case and honestly if they done something right then and there they could have they would have saved a lot of lives anyways i hope you guys liked this video hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below what you thought of this video any true crime cases you would like me to cover that are australian and yeah i love you guys and i'll see you in the next one bye and one last thing before you go, don't forget to check these books out. I'm using these to help me research this case. Mala, the Inside Australia's Biggest Manhunt by Clive Moore, who was the leading detective on the case, and Tom Gilling. And Sins of the Brother, the definitive story to the, of the backpacker murders and the inspiration for catching Mala. Mark Whittaker and Les Kennedy. These are amazing books, they're thick boys like me but yeah please check them out um you can get these in a bundle i think for like 40 41 dollars which is what i did and yeah I'll... again for real this time i love you i'll see you in the next one bye